SpaceX's Starship now has a heat shield that literally sweats. Yes, you heard that right, sweats. At 3,000 degrees during re-entry, while other spacecraft burn their shields away, Starship releases gas through microscopic pores to stay cool, just like your body sweats when it's hot. Why does this matter? Traditional heat shields are trash after one use. Ceramic tiles take months to replace after each flight, but a sweating heat shield? Just refill the gas tanks and fly again in days. Ship 36 just proved this isn't science fiction anymore. Zero missing tiles, mysterious gap filler everywhere. Something big is happening, but here's what nobody's talking about. How do you make this work on Mars where the atmosphere literally feeds the fire that's trying to destroy you? Let's dive right in. The hidden secret in Ship 36. Ship 36 isn't just another test vehicle. It's the most important starship ever built, and the proof is right there in the photos. Loon Compromiser 26. Look closely at the images from April 2025. See those thick layers of gap filler material between every tile? That's not normal protective padding that's never been there before on any previous starship. What you're looking at is SpaceX's secret weapon. This mysterious material covers a secondary ablative layer underneath, a backup heat shield that burns away if anything goes wrong. But here's the mind-bending part. They're not expecting things to go wrong this time. They're preparing to test something revolutionary, something that could change space travel forever. When physics becomes your enemy, picture starships screaming back to Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. The air can't get out of the way fast enough, so it compresses. And when air compresses at those speeds, it turns into plasma. 3,000 degrees of superheated death, hot enough to melt copper in seconds. Every spacecraft in history has faced this same killer. The space shuttle burned through tiles on every mission. Months of repairs, millions in costs. Apollo capsules literally burned their heat shields away, throwing away the protection system after one use. But what if there was a way to fight back? What if, instead of just taking the punishment, your heat shield could actively cool itself? That's exactly what SpaceX figured out. The breakthrough that changes everything they call it transpiration cooling, but that's just fancy talk for making spacecraft sweat. Here's how it works. The metallic heat shield has microscopic pores, thousands of tiny holes invisible to the naked eye. During re-entry, pressurized gas slowly leaks through these pores, creating a protective barrier around the spacecraft. Why does this work? Gases are terrible at conducting heat. That's the whole reason your winter coat keeps you warm. The trapped air acts as insulation. SpaceX flipped this concept. Instead of keeping heat in, they're keeping heat out. The gas barrier blocks the plasma from directly touching the spacecraft surface. But the real genius isn't just the cooling, it's what happens after landing. The Mars problem that terrifies engineers. Because Earth re-entry is easy compared to what's waiting on Mars. Mars' atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. When Starship hits it at interplanetary speeds, the physics get brutal. The compressed CO2 breaks apart into individual atoms, free oxygen everywhere, feeding the fire that's already trying to destroy your spacecraft. It's like dousing a bonfire with gasoline. The thermal load becomes so intense that even the best ceramic tiles can't survive. Must call developing a Mars-capable heat shield extraordinarily difficult. He wasn't being dramatic, he was being honest. If Starship can't survive Mars re-entry, the dream of becoming a multi-planetary species dies right there. In the Martian atmosphere, at 25,000 miles per hour, in a ball of superheated plasma. Ship 36, the make or break moment. This is why Ship 36 is different. This is why it matters. For the first time ever, SpaceX isn't removing tiles to test failure modes. They're not pushing the vehicle to breaking point to see what fails. Instead, they've installed every protection system they have. Zero missing tiles, complete gap filler coverage, secondary ablative backup layers. But here's the detail that reveals everything. Ship 36 was built from day one with integrated catch hardware. Previous ships had catch systems added later, almost as an afterthought. 
This suggests SpaceX expects Ship 36 to survive. They expect it to come back home intact. The hybrid solution nobody saw coming. What SpaceX has quietly developed is brilliant in its simplicity. They're not using transpiration cooling everywhere. That would be too heavy, too complex. Instead, they're using it only where it matters most. The nose cone, the leading edges, the areas that face the worst heat during re-entry. These get the revolutionary sweating metallic tiles. Everywhere else, proven ceramic tiles, lighter, simpler, good enough for the less demanding areas. The gap filler material on Ship 36 might be hiding the gas distribution system, or it could be providing thermal isolation between the two different heat shield technologies. Either way, it's evidence that SpaceX is ready to test this hybrid approach for real. The secret tests you never heard about. Here's what makes this even more incredible. SpaceX has been testing metallic heat shields in secret since 2019. Ground tests proved they could survive 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but ground tests aren't flight tests. You can't simulate the real conditions of hypersonic reentry in a laboratory. Every previous Starship test ended with the vehicle being lost, not because the heat shield failed, but because other systems couldn't handle the stress. Attitude control problems, engine failures, structural issues. Ship 36 represents SpaceX's first real chance to get clean data on their revolutionary heat shield technology. If the other systems work, if the vehicle stays controlled during re-entry, then they'll finally know if transpiration cooling works in the real world. What nobody's talking about, but there's a darker possibility that nobody wants to discuss. What if this whole transpiration cooling story is misdirection? What if the real breakthrough isn't the sweating tiles, but something else entirely? The secondary ablative layer, the gap filler material, the complete tile coverage. What if SpaceX has solved the heat shield problem in a completely different way? The only way to know for sure is to watch what happens during Ship 36's re-entry. Will it survive intact? Will the tiles show minimal damage? Will SpaceX finally have the data they need for Mars missions? The stakes that keep engineers awake. This isn't just about reusability anymore. This isn't just about cutting costs or flying more often. This is about survival on Mars. This is about whether human beings can actually become a multi-planetary species or whether we're stuck on Earth forever. If SpaceX cracks the heat shield problem, Mars missions become possible. If they don't, the timeline gets pushed back by years, maybe decades. Ship 36 carries the hopes of everyone who dreams of walking on another planet. The pressure on SpaceX's engineers must be crushing. One test flight, one re-entry, one chance to prove their revolutionary technology works. Everything depends on whether a spacecraft can learn to sweat. The truth about our future. So here's what we know. SpaceX isn't just building better rockets. They're rewriting the rules of space travel itself. The sweating heat shield isn't just clever engineering. It's the difference between humans staying trapped on Earth and becoming a truly spacefaring civilization. But Ship 36 is just the beginning. If this test succeeds, we're looking at Mars missions within the decade. If it fails, well, SpaceX will learn, adapt, and try again. That's what they always do. What fascinates me most, this technology could make space travel as routine as flying across the country. Your kids might vacation on Mars the same way you vacation in Europe today. The real question isn't whether SpaceX will crack this problem, it's how quickly they'll do it and what comes next. Because once you solve heat shields, once you make space travel cheap and reusable, the entire solar system opens up. Europa, Titan, the asteroid belt, suddenly everything becomes possible. What do you think happens when SpaceX makes their next breakthrough? Drop your predictions below. And if you want to stay ahead of the space revolution, hit that subscribe button because the next few years are going to be absolutely wild. SpaceX just revealed the truth behind Ship 36's explosion. A tiny nitrogen tank in the nose cone failed below its safety limit triggering the massive fireball that destroyed the $90 million rocket in seconds. But here's the terrifying part. This exact failure already killed a Falcon 9 in 2016. So why did SpaceX let it happen again? 
And what does this mean for their Mars timeline when they can't even keep their rockets safe on the ground? Let's dive right in. The night everything went wrong. June 18th, 11 p.m. The Massey test site glows under massive floodlights. Ship 36 stands ready on the test stand, a $90 million masterpiece of engineering waiting for its moment. Tonight was supposed to be routine. Engineers pump liquid methane and liquid oxygen into the rocket, just like filling a car before a long drive. The plan? Fire up all six Raptor engines without actually launching. Test the systems, check the data, move one step closer to Mars. But in less than 30 seconds, everything changes. The explosion doesn't start where you'd expect, not in those massive fuel tanks holding thousands of gallons of rocket propellant, not in the six Raptor engines that could flatten a city block. It starts in something no bigger than a household water heater, tucked away in the nose cone where nobody's looking. And that's just the beginning of this nightmare. The killer in the nose cone. SpaceX drops their bombshell announcement. Initial analysis indicates the potential failure of a pressurized tank known as a COPV containing gaseous nitrogen in Starship's nose cone area. COPV, composite overwrapped pressure vessel. Think of it as nature's strongest balloon, wrapped in carbon fiber that's tougher than steel. These tanks hold gas under pressure so extreme it would make your car tire explode like a firecracker. But here's what makes every rocket engineer's blood run cold. This tank failed below its proof pressure. That means it broke under less stress than it was designed to handle. It's like a bridge collapsing when only half the expected traffic drives across it. Wait, didn't SpaceX specifically say these COPVs share no commonality with Falcon 9 rockets? Keep that statement in mind, because what comes next will make you question everything SpaceX has been telling us. Anatomy of a $90 million mistake. Let's trace exactly what happened that night. Ship 36 uses Starship's version 2 design, a 165-foot-tall steel tower packed with the complexity of a small city. At the bottom, the liquid oxygen tank. Above that, the massive methane tank. But running along the sides are smaller header tanks that feed fuel to the engines during critical moments like landing burns. The explosion footage reveals a chilling sequence. First, you see jets of cryogenic fluid shooting from the nose cone area, not the main fuel tanks. Then the ship splits apart along the exact line where these header tanks connect to the main body. It's like watching a pressure cooker explode when its safety valve fails. The blast doesn't just destroy the valve, it tears the entire cooker to pieces. Except this pressure cooker was a 165-foot rocket worth more than most people will earn in their entire lifetime. And the most disturbing part? This was all happening on the ground, under controlled conditions, with emergency crews standing by. If SpaceX can't keep their rockets safe during simple ground tests, how do they expect to send humans safely to Mars? Elon's just a scratch confidence or damage control. While engineers around the world watched in horror, Elon Musk's response was telling. Just a scratch, he tweeted casually, as if watching $90 million evaporate was nothing more than a minor inconvenience. But behind that confident facade lies a much darker reality. This explosion just derailed SpaceX's entire timeline. Ship 36 was supposed to fly on Integrated Flight Test 10, scheduled for June 29th. The FAA had issued preliminary approvals. NASA was monitoring progress closely. Commercial customers were holding their breath. And then, in 30 seconds, it all collapsed. But here's what Musk isn't saying publicly. This failure pattern is becoming impossible to ignore. We've now seen COPV-related issues across multiple SpaceX programs spanning nearly a decade. The question is no longer about one failed tank. It's about whether SpaceX has a fundamental design flaw they still haven't solved. How many more explosions will it take before someone admits the truth? When one failure destroys everything, the Ship 36 explosion didn't just destroy the rocket, it obliterated the entire Massey test facility. The static fire stand, gone. The fuel delivery systems destroyed. The safety equipment melted slag. It's like your kitchen exploding and then realizing you can't cook dinner for the next six months. Ship 37 sits in the production hangar, 
nearly complete, but unable to test. Even if SpaceX finished it tomorrow, where would they put it? Launch pad A? That's a $2 billion gamble. If Ship 37 fails during testing there, it could destroy the launch tower and set SpaceX back years. This is where SpaceX's move fast and break things philosophy crashes into reality. You can rebuild software overnight. You can't rebuild a rocket test facility while federal agencies are asking uncomfortable questions about your safety protocols. And the clock keeps ticking. Every day of delay means NASA's Artemis program falls further behind schedule. Commercial customers start eyeing competitors. The narrow window for Mars missions gets smaller. SpaceX isn't just racing against engineering challenges anymore. They're racing against their own promises. And they're losing.